Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to go over mastering VLAN tagging in VMware vSphere. So what I have in front of you is a distributed switch called the VDS-Demo, and it's located in my home lab. And we're going to go over four different hotspots that I think are relevant for those that may have a strong networking background and not know VMware vSphere very well, or even virtualization admins who just want to understand VLAN tagging a little more clearly. So first, let's look at this distributed switch. Uh, out of the box, it's really not that fancy. I have a, a, a distributed switch with a name and a single set of DB uplinks in this represented with this port group with the chip on it. Now the first hotspot I want to point out is that you don't really need to do anything to this DB uplinks object here. Uh, it's just It just kind of exists here to tie in the physical uplinks on the hosts into a, a port group, so to speak. And if you go to the edit settings area, you'll see that it's got VLAN trunking for every VLAN possible. You really don't want to play with that. That's not where we control the VLANs that are coming into the various uh, virtual machines and VM kernels and things like that. So for the most part, leave this alone. Don't, don't touch any of this stuff in the uplinks. What you'll want to do is carve out port groups. Port groups are a way that we can logically uh, assign access to your virtualization environment. And it's also how we can present different types of tagging. So let's go over the three examples that will be included in this video. I'll make a new port group just by right-clicking the switch and uh, uh, activating a little wizard here. We'll give it a name. The first one we'll call it no VLAN because we're not going to do any tagging. And you'll see VLAN type route now is none. So what this will be used for is a use case where if you have a native VLAN set on the physical switches, this port group is going to receive that traffic. Any packets that are being sent through the DV switch that have no VLAN tag on them will respond to this port group, so your native VLAN. Or if there just are no tags on the physical side of the switch and you don't expect to receive any 802.1Q tags at all, you would want to make sure that the VLAN type is set to none. So if I click Next and Finish, you'll see the port group appears right there. We've got the no VLAN port group. And I could then assign virtual machines to this port group uh, in a total of 128 ports are available. You can raise that or lower that real time. And in vSphere 5.1, it actually has elastic ports in, in such a way that if I hit the 128 number, it'll go ahead and dynamically make 129th port when I need it. Uh, so it's pretty hands-off. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Anyways, let's go to the next type of port group. Right-click it, new port group. This one we'll call VLAN123 because I want to pass traffic to VLAN 123. So I would go to the VLAN type, change it to VLAN, which opens up a box for the number VLAN 123. And this is what's commonly known as virtual switch tagging, in that the tags that are received by the switch are then analyzed, and whenever it sees VLAN 123, it sends them to this port group and strips off the tag. So the virtual machines don't even need to know anything about the tagging. Uh, it'll just receive traffic meant for VLAN 123. Now you can also have other port groups with VLAN 123, and if the switch sees that it ma matches the MAC address for one of the virtual machines, it'll make sure that it gets the traffic. So it's not like you're limited to just one VLAN 123, uh, but it will go ahead and strip off those tags for you. So virtual switch tagging. The, sw the virtual switch is handling the tagging for you. So we'll click Next and finish that one. The final example I want to go over, if I go to a new port group here, is virtual guest tagging. So we'll call this VLAN trunk, and I'll change it to a VLAN trunking. And now I get a range of VLANs. So maybe this is uh, 150 through 160. Now the difference here is that the virtual switch is not going to pull any of those tags off for those VLAN ranges. It'll just listen to the 802.1Q tags when it sees something between the range of 150 and 160. It'll make sure that it's sent to this port group, but the tags will still be intact. So that's why it's called virtual guest tag tagging, in that now the virtual guests are responsible for being able to read, analyze, and strip off the tags uh, for those VLAN ports. And then, consequently, in the reverse, they'll need to be able to add those VLANs, uh, those tags, to their traffic that's leaving the virtual machine. Um, so that's basically how that works. You don't see the VLAN trunking all that commonly, uh, unless you have a virtual machine that maybe is acting as, let's say, a virtual router or switch or something that needs to understand. Maybe a virtual storage appliance might need a couple different VLANs on there. Uh, but that's how you make that. And there we go. So we've got no VLAN, 
Uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but this is external switch tagging because the virtual switch and the virtual guest are completely ignorant of the tags. You've got an actual VLAN port group, which is the virtual switch tagging, which is kind of like an access port for the virtualization environment. Uh, if the traffic comes in that matches that VLAN, the virtual switch will go ahead and remove the tag, or if traffic comes into that port group going out, it'll add the tag, and that's it. The guest doesn't need to be even aware of tagging. And then the final one, which is virtual guest ta uh, tagging, where we're passing along a range of VLANs. The traffic is sent to the virtual machine fully tagged, and it's up to the virtual machine to both peel off the tags and add the tags as traffic comes in and out. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.